Welcome to the hot sauce. This is Angel Linnells, a registered dietitian nutritionist in Seattle, Washington. Currently at 228 subscribers, and the goal is to make it to 250 by the end of the year. So please help me out and like, comment, and subscribe. You can also catch this, previous, and future episodes on your favorite podcasting platform. Let's get right into it. Today, we are going to feature Joe Cannon, who resides in the suburbs of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. You can find him discussing dietary supplements, exercise, rhabdomyolysis, and personal training on his podcast and YouTube channel. I'm sure you'll enjoy this non-RD episode. All right, well, welcome back to the hot sauce. Today, we have a, a good friend of mine. He's done a He's done a couple of things with me, and I wanted to repay the favor by having him back on the podcast. This is a non-traditional, this is not a nutrition-related podcast, but this is someone that I uh, respect and and wanted to get him on to talk about his journey and his career. Uh, I guess when I chatted with him last week, he was mentioning about being a frustrated dietitian, so maybe we can get into that. But uh, this is Joe Cannon. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put him in the hot seat here. So he's uh, now on the big screen, and we're going to go ahead and let him uh, you know, talk about his journey into what he's doing, where he went to school, and any jobs he's been doing. So Joe, the floor is yours. Yeah, hey, hi everybody. So I'm Joe Cannon. I'm an exercise physiologist. My uh, bachelor's degree is in chemistry and biology. My undergrad, my undergrad is in chemistry and biology. My master's is in exercise science. Um, it's funny you said you thought about going to get your degree in sports psychology. I also have a minor in psychology, but don't don't quiz me on that. I know enough to give through or maybe around a Jeopardy with that these days. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, so what brought me here? Uh, so essentially, I've always been a science nerd, and uh, you know, and as I was getting close to graduating with my with my chem bio degree. I, I thought to myself, gee, do I really want to spend uh, the rest of my life in a laboratory? <clears throat> and uh, I, I said, I really don't. I'm more of a people person. And, you know, it, it kind of led me down the road a couple of different paths. And I thought about nutrition. I was always that kid who was reading you know, nutrition labels as a kid. And I, I remember, you know, even back growing up in the, in the 70s, I, I would look and say, oh, we got to get this. It has the most nutrients. Because back then the food label allowed them to put anything on the, on the nutrition label. So uh, we were always picking the stuff that had the most vitamins and the most minerals. So, but, uh, you know, it, it's interesting that um, when I was, I was, the, thinking to myself, what do I want to do? I was thinking a little bit while for physical therapist as well. Um, but uh, I've always gradu- gradu- gra- uh, gravitated towards the nutrition aspect. But, you know, it, it's interesting that when I had reached out to dietitians back then, and we're going back about 30 years now, um, I was basically told don't do it uh, by dietitians because it's, mo- and again, what I had heard was it's mostly a woman's field. And that really was interesting to me. Um, and I, and I have to say that was one of the reasons why maybe I didn't go in that field because I thought that maybe they didn't want me. And, um, I, and, and I, and I, that is something that stuck with me that day, this day. Now, if I go back in time, I would have said, you know, damn the torpedoes, I'm going to do what I want to do. And you guys are going to accept me. Right. Um, but you know, I was, I was a different person back then and maybe didn't have as much gumption as I have now. But, you know, that didn't stop me. Uh, I I almost probably got a a minor in nutrition as well. I remember, ironically, I remember taking in in college Advanced Nutrition 2, and I jumped ahead of Advanced Nutrition 1 and just took the second one. And and it it is interesting. I walked into the class, and and it was me and actually a a friend of mine, and we were both in the same degree. We We were getting our master's in ex phys, and we were the only two guys in that class with the exception of the teacher, and, I, and I'll say it is interesting that on the very first day of class, before class even began, the teacher of that class, who was a guy, singled us out in the very first, like, 15 minutes of class, said, you do know there's a lot of chemistry in this class. I mean, he must have saw on, our, on his roster what our degrees were in, our, in our majors were, and maybe made some assumptions about us. And I, I thought that was kind of interesting and you know, he, he called us out, and I and I, I remember this day basically, you know, replying back to him. I got a degree in chemistry and biology, and I've already read your textbook. And uh, I ended up getting an A in that class. And by the end of this semester, he wanted me to publish one of my papers that I wrote 
you get it peer reviewed. I we had to write a big paper on something. I wrote it on DHEA because supplements are kind of my thing, mm -hmm. and that was really big, big anti aging supplement back then. So you know, it's interesting that um, you know, they, you know they they kind of assumed I was one thing because maybe they saw my degree or my you know I was a guy or something like that. But in in any event, I went on and uh, after that rambling, I went on and got a degree in in, uh, in X Phys. And I've pretty much been self-employed for the last 20 years or so. I, uh, I used to work in a, in a hospital-based fitness center where I oversaw a bunch of different exercise programs for people with health problems, diabetes, heart disease, stuff like that. And then, um, you know, I, I kind of made the jump from that because it was, it, was, it, was, it was challenging. Um, and I found that maybe I think they were going in a direction that I wasn't comfortable with. Bottom line, I, I started doing personal training and I, I also teach personal training classes. I still do that to this day. I've probably conducted almost a thousand uh, in-person and online personal training classes for those who are personal trainers, want to be personal trainers, <clears throat> etc. Um, and, uh, and the general public as well. And then, um, you know, over the years, I, I, I just saw, I wrote a few books. Uh, I've written a book on, on sports nutrition geared towards personal trainers. I wrote a book on dietary supplements. I think that would have been my very first book that I wrote, uh, which does need to be updated. So don't buy it until I, I let you know that it's updated. But uh, uh, I've written a personal training book. <clears throat> Gee whiz. And then uh, I started taking it on the Internet several years ago and created a website where I basically review dietary supplements based on the research. So I, I run a website called supplementclarity.com. I bring clarity to the world of dietary supplements. And, uh, and, and so that, and that's been very fun, been a lot of, a lot of fun because again, I, you know, frustrated nutritionists also, you know, brought me into the world of dietary supplements because mostly these days, I would say that for the last 30 years or so is what I've been researching the most, you know, delving into the companies and the, and the research on the supplements and the, the, the problems with the research and, and, and stuff like that and telling people about it in a way that I think they can understand I don't think there's a lot of that type of information out there. A lot of a lot of what you see on the internet, if you Google certain words for, about supplements, the, the top things you see on 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 the search results usually are not the best answers. And I get frustrated myself with what's out there. So, um, but I've been doing that for about 30 years. And then over the last few years, I've also been branching out. I've been doing YouTube videos again, mostly on dietary supplements, sometimes on on exercise. And then my my other my other pet project these days, um, these days, been over, been over a dozen years now is, uh, it's, it's a medical condition called rhabdomyolysis, which is, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a medical complication that occurs for many different things, but mostly for, uh, from my aspect, uh, that I focus on exercise, exercise induced rhabdomyolysis, which is muscle destruction from too much exercise. So, um, I've been teaching about that mostly to personal trainers for again, about a dozen years now, I think. Um, and that eventually also led me to go on to write uh, what I believe is the very first book ever on exercise induced rhabdomyolysis, because I think this is something that the medical community hasn't really gotten out to the general public. And I also think the educational community has not discussed it enough, which means personal trainers are not aware of it. Um, and unfortunately, they've, they've triggered it in some people. And it's actually quite serious because they can lead to hospitalizations um, and, and, and a lot of what I also call psychological trauma on the part of people, because everybody tells me the same thing about rhabdo. It's, it's the worst pain I've ever had in my life. Um, I, I've never heard of this condition before, and I'm terrified to exercise again. And that's what struck me with rhabdo when people started emailing me about it is they all use the same words, terrified to exercise again. And I thought, wow, this is something that people really need to know about. And uh, yeah, it is a rare phenomenon, but when it does happen, it is traumatic. And people do go through a, uh, as, I, as I sometimes call a post-traumatic uh, stress syndrome-like uh, disorder where they are afraid to exercise again. So uh, I'm pretty vocal about that on the internet. I've written a lot of articles and getting videos on it <clears throat> and stuff like that. So, you know, that's that's kind of me in a nutshell. I'm 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 somebody who likes to learn. I love a good mystery, which again has led me to the supplements. What are these things? What do they do in the body? What's the research? And again, rhabdo. What was that? Nobody taught me about rhabdomyolysis. And I, I've got, a, I think, a better science background than a lot of people in the fitness background, in the fitness industry. But it wasn't, it wasn't discussed in my classes. And I went back and I grabbed all my old exercise science textbooks, and it wasn't in any of them. Didn't really find it, right? Right. Yeah. 
and, no. and I said, well, it was what? interesting when you, when you, uh, when you met up with me, I'm like, Oh, this is an interesting phenomenon because there's not much information out there about it. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and, and it's ironic. We could talk all day about rhabdo. Um, it, cause it is a, a bit of mystery, you know, what causes it. There's even nutritional components to rhabdo. Uh, because somebody just emailed me, I think on, on, uh, online today and says, what are some things I should avoid, you know, if I don't want to get rabbed out. She was, if you look at the case reports, you don't want to do anything. And so I didn't really reply back and just list everything, but oh my gosh. Uh, I mean, most people are aware of it's that it's that rare side effect that you sometimes hear on TV when they discuss the statin drugs at lower cholesterol. Uh, and that's a drug induced uh, rhabdo. But there's a lot of things it can cause as well. And, you know, there's even, you know, there's this mysterious syndrome, which might be interesting, called Half's disease. Have you heard of that? No, it, no. It's a strange phenomenon. Nobody's figured it out yet. Um, rhabdo associated with eating fish. And it has been popping up periodically for about a hundred years. No one to my knowledge has ever identified the toxin that apparently is responsible for this, this phenomenon. Um, and it, 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 it just pops. And matter of fact, I think there was about a, about a year and a half, two years ago, there appeared to have been a rash of it occurring uh, in different parts of the world. But it comes and it goes. And uh, I've read the research and I haven't seen a, a definitive uh, molecule toxin, whatever you want to call it, might, might be responsible for this thing. Um, but again, I, I'm not saying I it because I don't want people to. Yeah, I don't want people to not eat fish because you know I, I eat it as great food, and I've never got yes. rhabdo from it. So, but again, I was like, "What is that?" <laughs> you know. So, if you list out everything, it can be linked to rhabdo. You don't want to do anything. You want to live in a bubble. But it is a rare phenomenon. Is, but it, yeah. yeah, yeah, it is fascinating no. for me. One of the reasons why okay. I like talking about it. Yeah. No. So. Awesome. I uh, like I said, it was it was interesting before I went on your podcast to chat with you. I was like, oh, you know, we were never really talked about this. And in, in, I took exercise physiology for uh, well, exercise science for undergrad and did my master's in exercise physiology and nutrition and never once really discussed it. And this was 2002 to 2006. Yeah. And it wasn't really a topic that came up. I think uh, we usually might see the other end of the spectrum where people are not exercising enough, not being physically active enough. So to, to hear about over exercising and the, and the breakdown of the body. It's a very yeah. interesting phenomenon. So it is. Um, and I, and I well, think thank you. That, yeah. Go no, ahead, no, sorry, was, back then when you were in school, when I was in school, it wasn't a, this, this, this push for high intensity exercise like there is now. And, you know, I, I, I want to think that some people do talk about rhabdo more in college than they did when we were in school. Um, I still unfortunately hear from people who are recent college graduates who have never heard of it. And, um, that, that saddens me because, and, and I understand why that is because the teachers themselves weren't taught about it. And so they're not teaching about it and they get in college in their own their little bubble doing they got what they got to do to teach and research. And, you know, so I, I'm going to keep talking about it. And, uh, cause I think education is the best defense against getting rhabdo. So. Absolutely. Well, I mean, we, we kind of answered the second part of the question. What has been your, well, of all the things that you've been doing, what has been the, I noticed a common theme of you are a uh, scientific researcher. You'd like to learn what, what is, what, what's intrigued you to be all, um, or I guess trying to learn as much as you can about the supplements, as much as you can about these different phenomenons. What, what has been the driving force, would you say? I, really, I, I, I would say because I want to tell other people about this stuff. And when I come across something that I don't think people know about, um, I, I want to educate them on it. I want them to be aware of these things. Because again, I do think knowledge is power. And we do live in, uh, gee whiz, we, we, we all have more powerful computers in our pocket than we went to the moon with. But yet people still don't know, you know, right from, you know, right from wrong when it comes to some of this stuff. We don't know where to turn for the right answers. And unfortunately, you know, the internet doesn't help because, you know, companies hire copywriters to write things and, and, and stick in keywords and key phrases. There's ways in which they can manipulate the, you know, the algorithm to rank higher in search engines. And people assume if, unfortunately, what they see on the internet is always going to be true. And sometimes the, the real true stuff isn't found until you maybe get to the 
third or fourth or fifth page of the search engine you're using uh, because they're so good at what they're doing. And, and, that, and that, that bothers me. So I, I want to you know, help people the best I possibly can. And I think the internet's definitely helped me do that, you know, much more than say the books have, because I can, you know, I just got an email on Instagram, not Instagram, but YouTube today from someone from France. Uh, I posted a video just, you know, last night on something and he was like, greetings from France. I'm like, that's so cool that I, you know, I can, I can reach out and help somebody, you know, clear across the world. Um, so I, I, I think, do think knowledge is power and I want to try to be part of that solution the best I possibly can. I love it. That sounds great. That sounds awesome. So next question. I mean, I, I definitely could sit here all day and chat with you. <laughs> I enjoyed, I enjoyed chatting with everybody, but it's, it's great to hear, especially someone with a exercise physiology background, because that was definitely a passion of mine as, as we come forward. But if you could do it all over again in your career, what would you change and what would you keep the same? What, 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 what do you think? Yeah, so I, I, I think I already answered that question. I would not have listened to the people that I originally talked to many, many years ago. I said, oh, you know, it's mostly a woman's field. You won't be happy in this field. You know what? I would not have listened to them. I would have did what I wanted to do. Um, and I, went, I would have went on and got a master's in nutrition and uh, probably went on and got a dietetics uh, certification as well. Um, and who knows, maybe even a PhD. I still, and I still do think about getting a PhD, probably in nutrition, if I were to do it again. Um, so, you know, that's probably what I would have done. And maybe a minor in exercise science, perhaps. Um, so, but that's what I would have done differently. I would have listened to my gut. Uh, I would have not have listened to the people who didn't want me in that field. Because uh, I, I know I can contribute to this field. And um, that would have been the thing that I think that would probably change its trajectory. I don't think it would change it in a large field. Um, I don't know if I would have heard about rhabdo. Uh, so maybe so maybe things are going to happen. And so maybe this is why where I am supposed to be. Um, right. But uh, that is something that I think I would have changed. Okay. Well, as, as mentioned, you know, when I entered the profession, there was about 2% men. We're now about 5 to 6% men. If you would have come forward, I could have potentially inspired you to be there because I'm, I'm trying to welcome as many guys into the fold as possible. I think it's a great profession to be in. So, so but appreciate your answer there. Um, what, I, I know, uh, I guess it's kind of... Um, what does the future hold for you? It's always interesting to ask, and I think you've kind of already talked about it, but any any other thoughts, any projects, or tell us about your podcast, tell us about your YouTube channel. Like, what what, what are you currently doing there? Yeah, so um, I've, I've got a podcast. I started doing that. Like, a lot of us pivoted during the pandemic, and I said, you know, let me start this podcast thing, and it's been a lot of fun. Um, and uh, mostly I talk about dietary supplements, I also talk about rhabdo. It was actually one of the things that people said you, you talk too much about on your podcast was rhabdo. I'm like, I interview people who've gotten it. And I, I was like, well, I don't care what they say. Somebody, I know it's helping somebody. So, um, so I talk about rhabdo. I talk about supplements. I talk about research studies that cross my computer screen uh, and, and, and things like that. I interview people like, you know, you were on my podcast last year. We talked about you and what, you know, what you do and stuff like that. Uh, so that's what I do on my podcast and on the YouTube channel, gee was, I think I've got maybe 300 videos on different things, mostly again on dietary supplements. So you, you see a, you see a, a, a trend there with the supplements. There's a trend, there's a trend coming through. Yeah, yeah there's definitely a trend. Uh, and, and rhabdo as well. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking out more on YouTube about rhabdo because there's a lot of people out there. They, they, they read an article, they think they know what they're talking about. And they all gravitate towards the same thing, which is the dark colored urine symptom. That's the big thing people gravitate towards. Oh, if your urine, you know, has, you know, looks like Coca-Cola, you have rhabdo. Yeah, but what if your urine doesn't look like Coca-Cola? And that's a possibility. And so they don't, they, they see the bottom left-hand corner of the big picture but because they're not looking at the research. They don't know certain things. So I just started talking more about it on, on, uh, on YouTube to hopefully move that needle forward and, and help some people and maybe, maybe help some research get moved forward as well on this topic. So I talk a lot of, again, nutrition studies, dietary supplements and rhabdo, and I interview people as well. So, you know, there, there is that, there's that trend, but it's, it's basically for the most part, science-based um, and, and trying to make a difference. Well, I love it. It's good. You are a frustrated nutritionist. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it. So, okay, well, cool. Well, the final question for you, um, 
considering your career path and everything you've been doing, uh, what are, do you have any pearls of wisdom or words of wisdom for anybody coming up? And, and I, I'd like to preface this that my podcast is usually geared towards dietitians, but I've opened up to outsiders because I feel we all can learn from each other and there's pearls of wisdom everywhere. So any pearls of wisdom that you would like to impart on a crowd? I would say probably similar to what I say to personal trainers when I teach them. Don't try to be all things to all people. Uh, you know, there, there's heart doctors, brain doctors, foot doctors, butt doctors. Uh, they specialize. Why can't we specialize as well? I mean, I, I tend to specialize in dietary supplements, rhabdomyolysis, exercise for special populations, sports nutrition, and, and things like that. I try to learn the most I can about certain things and I forget about the rest. Because if I, if I can take you, you know, if, if I know an inch, and like an inch wide and a mile deep on something, I know more about that topic than other people do. And, and that, I think, has benefited me uh, as being, you know, perceived as, as an authority in certain areas over the years. So I would encourage people to, again, don't try to be everything. Because you can't know it all, which is a good thing. Uh, nobody's going to be able to know it all. But you can know a lot about certain areas. And, and try to be, you know, the authority in those areas. And I think, I think that would be a, a good piece of advice I would give people. Because if you try to know it all, you, you drive yourself crazy. Um, and and I, I've tried it. You can't do it. And so learn, you know, learn a lot about certain things that are most interesting to you. And I think you'll be the better for it in the long run. I fully agree. I think uh, you're absolutely correct. You know, when you go back to your schooling and uh you know everyone's like i want to learn everything and i want to do everything and uh yeah you'll drive yourself nuts it's almost better to kind of start focusing down it's good to have uh, knowledge on a lot of things but it's 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 more impressive if you can really hone down and get into a certain segment of uh of whatever you're learning and get deep you know do a really deep dive and get in there because that's that's where um you know, through experience, through education, working with trainers, doing what you've been doing, uh, it gives you the experience and background to actually talk about the topic. Because I think, like, you're right, I can go on, like, a chat GBT and type in rhabdomyolysis. And then, of course, but funny enough, if you probably do that, some of your information might pop across there <laughs> without attribution to you. And then people might want to talk about it, but they don't have that they don't have the deep dive. They don't have the knowledge, right? So then they're superficially covering the topic and and that could be frustrating. And definitely on the internet, there's a lot of fluff and nonsense out there. So it makes it hard for us to actually, you know, talk to the masses when uh, an influencer can say something and, you know, oh, I, I've, I do all this exercise. I eat this way. I can... I have all the success. Well, it doesn't work for everybody else. We got to, you know, that's why we need specialists to do what we need to do. So, yeah. well, I greatly appreciate your time. Thank you. Before we end this video, I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor. It's me. Your greatest gift if you're watching this on YouTube is to like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and share this content. If you're listening on a podcast platform, please share away. And of course, if you want to buy me a coffee, you can go to buy me a coffee and share a beverage my way. And if you want to purchase one for the guests that I just interviewed, send it my way and I will get it to that individual. Thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.